Hello and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Today I'm going to be focusing on uh, actually the final adjustments of an architectural render or visualization and what you can do to make your images look incredibly powerful and clean in, uh, in just a few minutes in Photoshop. So I'm going to keep this tutorial real quick. Um, the premise of this uh, tutorial is that it's going to cover um, camera raw in Photoshop as like the final adjustment um, when you've already got your scene all ready to go. So what I have here is um, I have a uh, an image which I made in twin motion, um, which I will eventually get around to making tutorials for. Um, please let me know if you would be interested in seeing how I actually made this image. This is 100% twin motion. There is no Photoshop on this image at the moment. Um, I just made a cute, qu uh, few quick edits by adding in these people and I and I ended up lightening up the house, uh, my design that I had created. But for the final output of this image, I want to create an overall atmosphere and really like tweak the colors in, uh, very specifically to make before I submit this for um, uh, competition. So what I'm gonna do is actually, is actually this workflow requires that you create another image on top of all your layers. So what I'm gonna do is control alt shift E and what this does is it creates an image of all the layers below it in one image. Now I actually can turn off these other ones and it's non-destructive. So later when, if I need to go back and edit, I just turn these off, turn back these guys on and I can continue editing. But I'm gonna have just this final output that I'm going to edit in uh, camera raw. And I will quickly color this orange, which you can do with right clicking and then assigning a color just for um, organizational sake. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to filter camera raw filter, which is also control shift A, but I just have a tendency to not use that shortcut. And what this does is it uh, opens sort of like a, a simulation of the Adobe, Adobe camera raw, which is the um, camera raw like dot CR uh, editing software that's available for uh, photography. So this image is not actually, this is like a simulation of camera raw because obviously it does not have, this image from Twinmotion does not have the same uh, information embedded in it that what your camera your dslr camera or whatever camera you have will embed in your .cr file so this is a simulation of that same um, information but it's still very helpful so over here i'm just going to show you a few of the features that i actually use not all of them it's not going to be comprehensive on how to uh, get everything but i'll show you the ones i like to touch so over here i find most importantly is sort of the the temperature and white balance of your um of your into the blue will obviously be cooler into the yellow will obviously be warmer i'm trying to get sort of like a, a warm summertime um uh, sort of uh, feeling so i'm going to bring this into the warmer colors tint also can uh sort of give you something and i think maybe i'll tint this a little more also to into the pinkish side because i'm trying to get sort of an orange uh glow Maybe you're right, maybe it's more of fall rather than summer, but uh, we're gonna go with that. Um, the exposure, I'm not gonna touch because this picture is already really well exposed. In fact, actually might be slightly overexposed, which here, let's see if these, if we bring the highlights down. Yeah, actually you can see that white, that white spot on the top of the roof becomes, um, becomes a little bit more apparent, but I don't know if that adds. Maybe I'll just tweak that down a little bit because I'm not really trying to remove that. If this has been a photograph with that white spot, you would be able to bring back all the detail, adjusting the highlights and whites down here. I tend not to mess with these um, whites and blacks because I'll do so later in the curve adjustment. Um, clarity is what's gonna make the image look sharp or not. And this image already has a lot of detail embedded in the image with the grass and the pine, uh, pine needles and whatnot. So I, I fear if I bring this up, here, let's bring it up. It's really going to make it, uh, it like really stand out all the detail and it sort of detracts from your overall image. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit. Um, this, this sort of like, f it creates a little bit of fuzziness in the overall image. It's probably not perceivable, but I, it sort of smoothens out a little bit of the sharp edges uh, in this um and I, I'm, once again, I'm not going to use dehaze. That'll just make it either a darker or um, or almost foggier. I mean, that has its time and place, but um, I do not think I'm going to use that in this instance. 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset that to uh, zero. Enter. And vibrance and saturation, maybe I'll come back and tweak this at the end, but um, I, I, I think that's something that you mess with at the very end because that's very much uh, the overall feel. So what I'm now I'm gonna jump into the um, curves. You can change these different channels to either specifically be red, green, and blue, but I tend generally tend to do it in the more overall um, channel. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna lift this up so the blacks become a little bit softer. So on the left-hand side, just lift it, tweak the curve slightly so the blacks get a little bit more um, a matte and not such a deep black. And then maybe let's let's check. And uh, that's, oh wow, that's beautiful. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna mess with that side. And, and then you can adjust this so it's just uh, disproportionately affecting the blacks rather than the other. You can see that the normal uh, adjustment is on that 45 degree angle bisecting the square. So I'll bring that. So that's just minor adjustments in there. Uh, this is in um, sharpening. I haven't, I'm not, I'm not really into the sharp image in this. Once again, this image already has a lot of that sharp and uh, sharpness and that clarity already embedded in it. So I'm not gonna touch this one here. And this is probably the most powerful tool in here is this HSL adjustments, which is the hue saturation luminance. Um, well, hue is, is going to be able to desaturate out of color. Or sorry, no, it's, I'm, I'm totally tweaking. It's a, it's adjusting, of course, the hue of the, of the color. So you can tend your yellows to be more orangish or greenish or whatnot. So maybe on this image, I'm going to adjust those yellows and sort of bring it more into the orange warm uh, vibe. And let's also, let's also check out some of these other ones. Now there's no real, there's no real, um, we just created those oranges with the yellow, but there's no real other color I'd want to manipulate. Of course, there's some blues, but I'm not really gonna mess with that. Maybe, maybe we'll, maybe we'll come back to this. Um, in the saturations, you can have, now this is where you can desaturate out a certain color. So for example, if I really didn't like, you know, that orange or that yellow, I could basically remove it, but I feel like that does not add anything. But one color I was thinking about desaturating is the blue, really make the sky um, fade away. But now that I'm looking at it, actually, I think it deserves, it deserves a little bit of that blue and, and maybe actually I'll even increase the blue plus 10, something like that. And then luminance is where, so now this will affect the brightness of each one of these colors. So for example, if I wanted this yellow oranges to be brighter, I could, I could make them stand out with, uh, with this here. And maybe I'll do that um, just a little bit. So I'm as you can see, I'm primarily focusing on like the, the yellows and the blues. And I was thinking about desaturating greens, maybe making the greens a little bit darker, get a little more atmosphere more a little bit more atmospheric so let's bring down the the greens um, a little bit okay now let's move into the split toning um this this basically is going to uh control almost like an additional color but it's consolidated to either the highlights or the shadows and you're never going to want to bring the saturation up fully here i'll show you what it what it does so now it's adding a red hue at extreme saturation in all the highlights which is obviously horrible so this saturation number I've always found needs to be relatively low. And now let's see what we can do. Um, the red, it's always interesting to do sort of a warm color in the highlights I found. So for example, reddish or an orangish, let's just go with orangish just to, uh, just to keep the, the atmosphere of what I was building going. Maybe even, maybe we can bring that up a little bit. And then in the, in the, in the shadows, what we'll do is we're going to increase the saturation a little bit. And let's see what a bluish or purplish almost hue look like. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, I'm going to tone that down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to, we're going to move forward with this. It's sort of a little bit more stylized. This is not necessarily my preferred style. I'm going to say that right now. But I think it's important to be able to also change your style to, to get a feeling that you want a, uh, a competition jury or whatnot to see. Um, it's not necessarily exactly what you think is best. It's sometimes you have to adapt. Anyways, so lens correction, um, I'm not really needing to do this. You could make yourself look real fisheye if you wanted to with these settings, but 
of ours actually wanted to sort of make an image like that for a um, competition, but I'm not going to, obviously. Oh, and one thing also in this lens correction is the vignette. Um, you can, this is obviously going to uh, basically bring in a color towards the edge of your imaging. So if I go towards the black, it's going to bring in a slight black. And if I go towards the white, it's going to bring in obviously a white, like a, a brighter. Um, however, what I'm going to do is just bring in a slight amount of black just to sort of focus the image on the center. You might, I brought in barely enough for you to actually probably perceive that that was there at the beginning, but, um, but we will see. Um, in here, effects, not really into the effects, so we'll, so we're going to skip that. Once again, here's just more like calibration, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And then what you can do is in the end, create presets and, uh, and, and in store though, so you could reapply the same effects to the next um, images, but I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to go back is I'm going to go look again at this vibrance and saturation. Let's see, let's see sort of like what a um, desaturating that image and de or uh, reducing the vibrance can do for it. I'm not, I'm not so interested in, in these on this image, I find. So I think I'm going to keep them. Maybe, maybe I'll desaturate it a little bit, just bring in more. What I really want to do is I want to relook at the temperature. I'm going to increase that slightly, just very slightly. And I'm actually going to go now go back and rechange this um, in the HSL. I'm going to, I feel, I feel like I might've changed the yellows uh, slightly too much. So I'm going to try to, um, or maybe not enough, who knows? It's kind of in a weird position where it is orange, but it's not also not orange. Anyways, okay, I'm go so I'm gonna actually increase the yellows more towards orange and the hue. And then, let's see, let's see what I can do here. And actually, yeah, that should be, that should be about good. I don't know if this, let's, let's see if this, yeah, I'm gonna keep that down and let's see what, Let's see what happens if I bring that back. Back to zero. Mm, okay, I think I think that's pretty much it. And so, I mean, once you kind of have gotten your colors, I'm not saying this is the perfect uh, combination. You're gonna have to play with that sort of on your own. But what you can do now is you just click OK. And now what you have is that fully edited image in camera raw, totally isolated from your other edits. You can go back and change this, but export this in the end. You just have to do that control shift E to capture all the layers below in a single image and then edit. Anyways, I'm yeah, trying to keep this real quick. Uh, but thanks again for um, checking out my channel. And if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe and comment below what you'd want to see next in uh, any future tutorials. Um, I'm trying to keep it varied, you know, bounce between different computer softwares that I find are interesting. And, and honestly, I feel like I'm learning when I speak out loud and do this sort of thing. So, so I've really been enjoying it. Anyways, thanks very much. Bye.